You're watching EVH and Gear TV, brought to you by Design 39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones. And official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com. And now, here's your host from Ontario, Canada, EVH artist Eric Broadbent. Hey everyone, happy Monday to you all. Welcome to EVH and Gear TV. We are live, a rare a rare uh, night for me to be live, but uh, we're live nonetheless. I've been wanting to do this for quite some time here, just have not been able to allocate the time, and there's no better time than the present. Beautiful day here in southwestern Ontario today. Weather is absolutely fantastic. I was outside in the t-shirt, which is um, very rare around here. I had to make a run to the city had a jacket before I left, and uh, the jacket didn't last long, that's for sure. So I hope everyone is very well. This is going to be a, a live demo tonight on this very, very cool limited edition 2015 Pacer Vintage from Kramer. This is a really fun guitar to play um, acoustically without the amps here and with the amp, with the Helix and a combination of all the above. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to run through some of the features of this guitar. A lot of people are asking, how do you get this one? Because it's a limited edition. But they are available for sale while supplies last and I, I'll go through all that with you this evening as well, too. But it's uh, very, very cool, you know, uh, nice, beautiful throwback to the 80s. Uh, they are still being manufactured. Um, so you've got a, you know, typical dual humbucker, three-position uh, toggle toggle switch with some split coils and all the fun stuff. Obviously, a double locking Floyd Rose Tremolo system floating, which is odd for me. You know me here on the channel with all the Wolfgangs and all the Stripe Series guitars and things of that nature. Uh, I'm a I'm a flush Floyd guy. I, I don't none of my Floyds float other than you can just see it on the couch at the back there. Uh, the Line Six Variax it has a floating Floyd. And even when uh, I got that guitar, I thought, okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fu tone it, and I'm going to put a trem stopper in there. And I actually it's been a lot of years since I've had a floating trem as our floating Floyd. Uh, I think the, one of the last series of guitars I had with floating Floyds were Ibanez back in the day. I had some of the Gems. I had the RG750s and uh, several guitars of that nature. Uh, and I and I had the Floyds floating back then. There really wasn't much of a trem stopper or anything. There wasn't Futon back in that day. And a lot of us would just kind of put some, you know, dummy uh, rigs in the back just to, uh, you know, stop our trems from floating if we wanted to do that. Or a block of wood. Sometimes I've seen people used to glue, glue a block of wood in a cavity. Um, but I think with this one here as well too, I think I could possibly keep it floating as well. Um, I, I'm, I do have a decent, um, a touch at the bridge as far as when I palm mute, I don't, I'm not too aggressive on it. So I can play the guitar without pushing it out of tune. That's where a lot of people sometimes will struggle is, uh, if they've never played a floating Floyd, they're used to, uh, or even, even a Floyd period. If they're resting their hand on the bridge, you can always going to go, you know, a little sharp, right? But I, I can, I can kind of feather touch that still palm mute and I don't really have a problem with it. So I could really foresee myself using, keeping this one floating as well as the Line 6 Variax as well too. So a few people jumping in the chat already. I'll say hi to those guys and girls. We've got Darren Moore, Rock and Roll. Uh, Paul Glover is here saying hi, Eric and everyone. Ricky Mees is here. Hi, Eric. I'm digging that guitar. Thank you. Uh, my beautiful Nocturnal Butterfly, uh, formerly, the artist formerly known as Poison Ivy Gross here. Uh, she's uh, going to be doing some cool things with her YouTube in the uh, near future and with some friends and Maybe she'll, she'll mention that tonight, maybe not, but uh, she's going to be doing some cool things as well, too, as well. Uh, Carlos is here saying, I have a 94 Kramer with Fender noiseless pickups, uh, also a new AZ, and I'll never get rid of my old Kramer. Um, Guitar Battles Live. And says, yay, finally caught a live stream. Awesome. I'm glad that you caught one. And I've always said this as well, too. Some of my best playing as a kid growing up, I had so many Kramer Strikers and the Focuses and all those different things, but the Kramer Strikers... There's one particular model I remember very, very well. Um, it was uh, the it was a humbucker single, single. So it was very much like a, the Stratocaster feel was very cool for me. And um, also it had uh, the, the real Floyd, not the Floyd 2 or anything like that. So it was really cool. And then I, th I think it either it came with a pickup uh, coil tap on it or I put one in. But I just love that guitar. I think it was probably worth like 350 bucks back in the day. And some of my best playing because like i say you know this you know as a as a young musician you know let's say your parents buy you a really expensive guitar or you buy an expensive guitar and buy it back in that day expensive might be 500 dollars or 600 dollars or maybe a little bit more than that you'd be afraid you'd take it out and you'd, you'd smash it or you'd ding it 
and your little subconscious while you're on the stage with the Kramers back in that day, some of the, the lower, the lower ones, like I was talking about, you know, you could get up there and play and you really didn't care if you got a little nick or a ding and you wouldn't lose any sleep over it. And some people these days too, they, they don't lose any sleep if they ding a three or four or $5,000 PRS. I mean, if the money is good for you, well, that's great. Who cares? Right. But, um, I, I've, I've had a lot of fun with this. I've had this here in the house for probably about two weeks. This one here in the Kramer Assault, which I'm going to be doing on another night. Instead of doing two demos in one night, I'll do a demo on that one. That's like the Les Paul style shape. Uh, a few other people jumping in here as well, too. Dan Halen, Jose V is here. And, um, and yeah, po- uh, Noct- I almost said Poison Ivy. Nocturnal Butterfly says, going to be on another channel, bringing Guitar News Network live. I'm really excited about that. It's going to be very, very cool. And check us out on Facebook as well, too. It's a, it's a, a Check them out on Facebook. And um, uh, Nocturnal is a... Um, is an admin here, so she can probably post a link to that. So please feel free to post a link to that Facebook group. So hopefully everything's going okay here. Everything's looking good. Uh, had some bad internet connection at the at the start of the uh, the show here, uh, but Junior is playing a game of Fortnite right now and on the PlayStation, and that just tends to uh, consume a lot of the bandwidth. But uh, we're, we're uh, knock on wood here, we're pretty good. So what I'm going to do here is I'm running through, of course, my Line Six Helix. Uh, I'm using the Helix rack for the demonstration tonight. And I'm going to use the Helix, and I got a buffered um, uh, output going directly to the lunchbox back there, the EVH lunchbox 2, uh, 5153 lunchbox 2, which is running to the 412 cabinet down below. And I do have two mics on there, but I'm only using one speaker tonight. Well, I shouldn't say one. I'm only using one mic on one speaker, and it's panned right dead center, and that 5150 is untouched. So I'm going to try to give you the sound of that amplifier first. Okay, let's try that for a second, just so you have an idea. Okay, and it's loud as heck in here, too, and I got the amp next to nothing. Okay, hang on a second. You're getting Helix, too. Sorry. Okay, cab's on. Yep. Doesn't sound like it's loud in here, but it's loud. Okay, now if I go to a, dir- a dirty patch on my Helix, you'll notice it actually changes um, the patch back there as well, too. So there's totally dry. Okay. So totally dry. So there's no effects running to the 5150. So what I really like what I'm going to be doing tonight is you're going to be hearing some nice wet um, helix processing left and right reverb, some nice delay, some compression, uh, flanging, phasing, you know, all the typical effects that us Van Halen fans like. And then I'm using the real tube amp for that extra accent, if that's if that's a, a word we can use. Uh, Jared Frost is here saying, what's up, fellas? Jose V. Eric, do you think Kramer guitars age decently? I'm about to buy a Kramer Super Strat USA uh, 1992. Do you think it's worth it? Um, uh, yes, I do. I, I think they age very, very well. I've got a buddy, a very good friend, um, Darren LaCourse here. I'm, uh, he used to be a singer in my band, and he's a very dear friend of mine. We go way, way back. Uh, I want to get him down here because he has a bunch of Kramers as well, too, and I know he still has them. At least I haven't asked him, but I know he does. He's the kind of guy that hangs on to those things. They're from the 90s, and I guarantee you they'll play as good today as they did in that day. So I do recommend them for sure. I mean, you know, if they're good enough for Eddie Van Halen and some of these other artists out there, they're they're good guitars. They're definitely good guitars. So I do recommend it uh, wholeheartedly, Jose. Aljean Go is here. He says, we're live and the man of the hour for sure. Aljean uh, was uh, kind enough to get these here to review. So thank you, my friend. And I'm really, um, I'm excited tonight. I warmed up a little bit before the show. That doesn't mean I'm going to play well, but it means I'm going to play a little bit better than not warming up. So we'll see what happens there. Good. And uh, Nocturnal Butterfly uh, posted the link to the Facebook group. It's a fun group. It's lo- anything news for guitar for the for the week, you know, what's happening with Foo Fighters, what Eddie Van Halen's doing and all that kind of, you know, anything that's in the news, guitar stuff, it's it's there. So check that out. It's a fun group. Okay. So I'm just going to give you a couple chords here with the Helix and with the amplifier and we'll see what we got for sound. And I'm going to give you kind of some tonal demonstrations of what the pickups sound like um, individually, um, split, all that kind of good stuff. And I didn't even realize that there was uh, split coils on here until you know, I like it's. I wasn't sure if it was a volume and two or volume and two tones, but it, or what it actually is is a volume, volume and tone. And each of the knobs are uh, you just pull them up, and that's your coil tap. And that's not you know it's not rocket science. It's common in a lot of different guitars. Very very simple, um, and it's great. A nice coil tap. And then you've got your little micro three-way toggle, which is very convenient right there. It's easy to flick back and forth. And if you want to do your typical Les Paul kind of a kill switch thing, you could turn the volume off on the neck pickup and toggle back and forth and get your little stutter effect. Okay, so let's see what we got here for tone. And then I'll shut off this microphone here in a second. And uh, Logan Wilson here says, hey, mate, I'm feeling sick and I came home from school. So it'd be awesome if you could wish me better. Okay, Logan Wilson, I hope you get better and uh, try not to miss too much school. And thank you for stopping by. Get, get well. Drink lots of juice. 
here in Canada, ginger ale. Okay, so let's pop on the Helix, and here we go. We're talking some... Listen to that. Hey, okay, isn't that something? Okay, now you might get a little tiny bit of uh, string clack here, um, but I'm, I'm going to leave it on just for demonstration purposes. So we're on the rear humbucker right now, okay? I, I love that. Very bright, uh, defined. Seymour Duncan pickups too, and we're going to go through um, the exact specs here. I mean, I'm going to pull up the website here in a second. We're going to have a look at that as well too, give you full full specs because there's probably going to be things I'll miss. Okay, now. I'm going to coil tap that in a second. Okay, here comes coil tap. That's so nice. Okay, I'm going to put it back in the humbucker mode. We're going to go to the middle position. Uh, both humbuckers on full blast. Uh, tone, I don't use tone too, too much anymore. I used to use it a lot. So tone, I'm just, it's full on two humbuckers, middle position. I, I, this is on the Wolfgang guitars. I play here a lot in this position here. So it's one of my favorite positions to play. Just a nice, um, balance between, uh, you know, rhythm and, and lead. Sounds very nice, very articulate. to the neck pickup. Here is still in humbucker mode. Okay, a little warmer. Okay, and now we'll coil tap that humbucker in the neck. see the guitar more instead of my ugly face. Let's go here to maybe this one. There we go. Isn't that sparkling clean? Beautiful, isn't it? Let's have a look at some of the comments here. Rico Beats here saying, uh, great live stream. Rico, I have a very good question. Rico says, any idea if Kramer is no longer making new guitars? They are actually making new guitars. Um, in the link to the description down below, so they're they're under the Gibson and Epiphone umbrella. Let's go back to the other camera for a second. Let's turn that one off. And the link down below, I've got uh, links to where a dealer finder. So you can, you can pick up any of these guitars at your authorized uh, um, Epiphone retailers. Um, and I'll give you some more information on this guitar where you can get it. There is a link as well, too, to Long McQuaid, uh, which is our Canadian retailers. There's other retailers here in Canada as well that sell them, but in USA as well. Uh, the link is in the description down below to take you to the dealer locator, and there's also the Gibson customer service as well. You can reach out to them, too, if there's a dealer you're trying to find that you may not see on the map, but they are available. Um, this one particular one was made. I'm going to give you a little bit of information that Aljean provided me. I've got it here in a notepad just because I, I wouldn't forget it. Because um, some people are saying, well, Eric, how did you get this guitar if it's, it's, if it's a limited edition 2015? Well, there are still some available. So his notes are saying the Pacer Vintage Limited was introduced in 2015 and are still available at the moment while supplies last. That's the key word, while supplies last. Um, I don't know if it's a short supply, massive supply. I don't think it's massive. I think it's a limited supply. So if you're interested in one of these, we're going to have a look at some of the color options that are available. This one, I think, is one of the coolest, uh, you know, right off the get-go. But that's just my own personal opinion. He says the guitars can be ordered, uh, can be special ordered by any Gibson Epiphone dealer worldwide, e-commerce, or your brick and mortar, like your mom and pop shops. Like, you know, you walk in the door and the door rings as you go in, those kind of shops. Remember those days going into a guitar shop to actually buy a guitar? Nowadays, it's not necessarily always the case. And, you know, uh, I, I do like to try to support the um, the mom and pop shops and, you know, even the big box ones as well, too, as long as you can physically talk to somebody. It's nice to uh, talk to people. But if you can't, if you don't have a dealer in your area, then, you know, your uh, mail order might be the way you have to go and always take it to your local um, uh, authorized uh, dealer 
um, so they can do a setup on it as well too. So I'm going to give you a little bit. Yeah, you want to see the color of this thing. I, what nice thing is I'm using a wireless right now, so that'll help tremendously too. So, so have a look there. There you go. Look at that color. Look at that sparkle in that. Isn't that something? Look at that sparkle. Can't just a just beautiful like a race car. Um, let me see here. So uh, he also says uh, most e-commerce dealers like your SamAsh.com, your Sweetwater. Uh, Zounds, uh, American Mus Musical Supply, places like that. You can order online there as well, too. And then, like I mentioned down below, you can find a list of dealers on the Kramer site or by contacting Gibson Customer Service. And again, the links are down to all that down below. So after the show tonight, uh, or also maybe in another tab, click another tab and open it up and have a look. So let's... Um, um, okay, so people asking some good questions. Um, and he, uh, Dan Halen's asking me if it, this one has mahogany body. Um now, Aljean might have to comment on this because going by specs, I was told that this one was maple, but I did think it was um, mahogany. So I'm 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 not 100 percent sure on that. Well, let's jump over to the specs and let's have a look at that. Okay. Matter of fact, I could also I have this, I could just turn this on as well too. Um, there's some of your specs here as well too. Your original Floyd Rose uh, two humbuckers, uh, the Dunk, Duncan JB Bridge and uh, Duncan. JN pickup in the neck. I can't read the specs here. Let's let's actually go over to the website. It'd be a lot uh, easier to uh, to have a look there and have a see. One sec, turn that off. Let's jump over to right here. Okay, so there we go. I've actually got the guitar pulled up on Kramer's website, and here again, link is in the description down below. Uh, you would normally go uh, to once you're here. If you just come to the front door of Kramer's website, you go to products, and then you'd go into um, uh, Pacer. Uh, and then you have the various different pacers, but since we're already here, we're going to have a look. So there's your finishes, and there's the one I have right now, the candy. I'm not, you can't see my mouse pointer, but the candy red metal flake. So uh, and obviously, I'll, I'll give you a quick, I'll read a couple paragraphs here. Uh, bringing high-octane performance of the 1980s to the fastest riffing players of the 21st century, Kramer introduces a pacer vintage, a guitar equipped to the hilt for tone performance with the looks that set an era a light flashback to the shred a boom of the uh, mid 1980s and Kramer was the number one selling electric guitar brand in the world it's fast powerful designs setting the pace for countless other manufacturers to follow and of course you know you've got your artists all you know household names like Vivian Campbell Eddie Van Halen Brad Gillis Neil Schoen Richie Sambora and many others the Kramer Pacer was the flagship of the range patterned after the elegant offset double cutaway body and beak headstock of the original and I love the beak headstock um Obviously, uh, beautiful. Uh, the D Duncan pickups, Floyd Rose Tremola Bridge, the Pacer Vintage is available in your choice. And metal flake finishes, candy red, uh, metal emerald green, candy yellow, and uh, magenta metal. Um, so, and you can go on. You can read all those specs yourself too. Um, but let, I'll actually call up the um, uh, images here. Have a look. So there you go. That's the candy yellow metal flake. Kind of nice. Here's one I have in my hands right now. And you can see the metal flake there. It doesn't do it justice. Um, I, I mean, at least you can actually see it here. Some photos I've seen online just don't do it full justice. Um, it's beautiful in person, but it, you can get a little bit of a hint of it there. Okay, go down to the green, and that's the emerald green metal flake. That's kind of cool. And this one here, you've seen Eddie play one uh, like that uh, multiple times. Uh, I think he had that, the Rockinger Trem on there at the time. It wasn't the Floyd Rose. Same model. Um, uh, so that's very, very nice, too. That'd probably be my second favorite. In my personal opinion, that would be the second one I would go to. Although they're all pretty nice. I, I think that would be my second favorite, though. So that's, that's on the website as well, too. But here again, some of the specs I told you about. Original Floyd Rose. Two humbuckers, Duncan JB in the bridge and Duncan JN pickups in the neck. And they're, they're white. Bobbins white pickup uh, um, uh, pickup ring, dot inlays, chrome hardware, maple body, maple neck and fingerboard, and if El John, okay, so he did comment, he did say maple body, and I thought so. Um, it is heavy though; it's it's not too heavy, but it's heavy enough that you you could be confusing it with um, with mahogany. Uh, to me, if I could give, let's let's um, let's continue with the specs, and I'll tell you what I what I attribute the weight to. Um, maple neck and fingerboard, 12 inch radius, 22 frets, 25 and a half inch scale. And of course the colors, like I mentioned to you, and, um, it includes a hard shell case. Now for the people that are buying here in Canada, and I guess there's no reason why, um, some of you in the United States can't buy from Canada as well too. I looked up the one at Long and McQuaid, uh, which there, I do have the link in the description. Now I, I don't want to be quoted or misquoting, but the last time I looked, it was 1079, uh, Canadian at Long and McQuaid. And, um, uh, Eljean can correct me if I'm incorrect on that, but that's why I looked at it just here tonight as well. So a very affordable rock and roll guitar and a, and a very, very nice uh, hard shell case. 
kind of a leather uh, look to the outside, embroidered with the, um, not embroidered, but silk screen with the Kramer logo. Let's go back to this, the other screen for a second here. Um, no, I think I got a bit of delay in the webcam. Hopefully we're okay. Um, so the case comes with it as well too. And that itself, you know, you're probably looking at a couple hundred dollar case. So it's a very, very good, a very, very good value uh, for your money for sure. So the weight I was trying to describe to you, because I did feel it was a heavy guitar, but not too heavy. I like a decent heavy guitar. Um, I attribute it to one of my other Wolfgangs when I did the full FU tone upgrades with all the brass blocks, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there's a tiny bit more weight than the traditional guitar. Uh, that's what I feel the weight is of this one. It, but it's nice. It's a nice balance. It sits comfortably um, on the back. Obviously, some nice little appointments that I like a lot is I normally always take off my, uh, my trim cavity covers. And with this one being a floating trim, I could see myself if I'm going to uh, change between 440 tuning and a drop tuning a little bit like a half step down. You're going to have to adjust your springs a little bit. And if you're one to leave your trim ca ca cavity on, that can be a pain in the butt. Taking off six screws, adjusting your springs, put it back on. This one here, obviously you leave your cavity cover on. Screwdriver fits right in there. Change the springs uh, tension. Bob's your uncle and you're ready to rock and roll. Now, myself, I would probably still throw on a, a futon uh, brass block and some of the extra little goodies just because it's one of those things I always do. And with the price point of this guitar being as affordable as it is, a couple of hundred extra bucks from Futone, FU-Tone, uh, will set you off to a race machine. But you don't need it right out of the gate. It's something you could take, you buy it, take it home on a weekend and rock and roll. Come Monday morning, grab some parts, order the parts, and uh, take it to the next level. But it's not needed by any means. On the back of the headstock, the kind of thing we used to always do back in the day, your, uh, your three millimeter wrench for your locking nut, and then of course your saddle, your saddle, uh, your saddle mount. Um, uh, I'm not sure what, if that's a two millimeter or whatever it is, but it's a little smaller, obviously, right? Back in the day, we used to always, at least for myself, I would take pencil erasers, I would cut them square, I'd crazy glue them onto the back of my headstock and just poke a little hole through it. And that's how I would always run my uh, Allen wrench in there. Because, you know, back when we were kids, we didn't have like 15, you know, Allen wrenches like we do today kicking around. You're at band practice or wherever else. Like, hey, you got a three millimeter wrench? No, here's my dad's vice grips. And then that's how you start ruining your guitars, right? Uh, can I go back to yellow? Frank McNeil says, yeah, let's do that. I can do that for you. One second. So I jumped off of that. Okay, let's go back to it. Let's go back to yellow. Well, that actually, yeah, there's the yellow one is the main one on the page. I can always open up the other one. One sec. So it's cool. That's cool, right? Kind of gold. More, kind of more, almost more gold than, than yellow, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of neat. Okay, let's jump back over here. Okay, so I, um, and I apologize if I'm getting any out of sync issues. It's not my internet right now. I upgraded my computer to uh, Mac OS High Sierra, which was a no-no. So uh, that's what's causing me a little bit of uh, lag tonight, and I apologize on that. Um, I've actually, in the, I'm in the process of setting up my Mac for a dual boot, so I'm actually going to have a, a old uh, Mac El Capitan, which is one of the, I, I think one of the best operating systems Mac has. And when I start doing my shows, I'm going to dual boot. I'm going to boot into oh, um, El Capitan. And I'm not going to have some of these problems I've been having. And if you're a Mac user at home, and if you're doing a lot of audio stuff, I, I really highly suggest you don't upgrade to High Sierra if you can help it. And the thing is, I can't roll back now because I've got some software I've installed that needed updates, and uh, like Photoshop and my video editing suite and things like that. And I've created new projects since then. So if I go back now to an older version, I won't be able to open up those projects. So that's enough of that. We're not here to talk about software, but that's it. Um, so where do we leave off? Dan Halen. Uh, so yeah, he was asking about the mahogany body, and we've cleared that up. Uh, Logan Wilson from the toggle switch. Um, guitar, what was his first question? I missed the question on the toggle switch. Um, Ricky Me is a uh, guitar, compliments Floyd Block. They have a plate to cover the springs in the block. Okay, there you go. And Frank Vanille says, looks nice, thanks. So we're going, thank you, uh, Frank. So let's try playing this in conjunction with a song. Okay, I'm gonna play a couple of my band songs here. We'll try some Van Halen riffs here as well too. I, I'm not tuned down for some of the uh, vintage Van Halen, but being that we can play Van Halen, why not? Okay, let's grab some songs here. All right, so what have we got here? We're gonna play some of my, we'll play two of my songs, just because only two of my band songs that are actually tuned to 440, everything else is tuned down. All right, let's have a look, give this a try. Okay, so I gotta roll back on the cabinet mic. All right, so now we're gonna have, and it's got the Helix on there. Let's get the laptop on, turn off my voice, and see what we got, all right? Godspeed, and we'll switch, we'll switch cameras here too, one sec.
What'd you think of that? That was pretty cool. That was that the guitar felt really awesome. Let's go back to the other camera here. Um, Darren Moore, rock and roll, uh, says sounds fantastic. Jared Frost says great tone. And Mauricio, my buddy Mauricio says, um, awesome, great tune and tone. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I need a quick sip of coffee here. It keeps me nice and warm. It is warm in the studio, but I like to stay excessively warm when I play and I really need more coffee. Pardon me for drinking coffee on camera and it doesn't stay hot. I'm just made my own coffee. I need more. I'm drinking a lot of coffee lately. I'm going to play. Let's rock it up a little bit. Let's play a little bit of a rock song, and then we'll try to do a little bit of some Van Halen fun, and we'll see where it takes us. I don't have anything planned Van Halen-wise, but we will just play with it. So this one's going to be a little heavier. This one's called Loaded Gun. Let's go over to the um, uh, rhythm channel. And if, Actually, before I go do that again, that, that lead channel makes a little bit of noise. If you're noticing, if you're paying attention closely to what I was playing there, I was doing a lot of coil tapping on the clean parts. So I was doing, you know, like... Okay, so... Um, in the in the kind of the nice little verse part of that song that I was just playing, um, I like to kind of keep the dynamics low. Okay, so I'm doing this, and then to just the pre-chorus, just before the chorus, it gets a little louder. So I go back to humbucker. Isn't that nice? Just a little bit of a dynamic with the split. It, it doesn't sound like there's a lot of difference, but there is. nice i like that and actually you know, before we play one of my ones with the backing well i shouldn't say backing tracks this is one of my songs i'll show you a couple new riffs i'm working on that were that were inspired because of this guitar so guitars will inspire you to write uh just like the, a lot of uh, viewers on the show here have said that the helix i've been using a lot here has been has inspired people to write songs carl santan is a good, a good friend of mine and he said that i got a helix and it made me write my first song in his entire life he's 50 years old and a, and a device or an instrument made him write something well, this guitar made me come up with these riffs. Um, you know, it's an 80s iconic style of guitar. And what you're going to hear is going to be kind of a throwback to that era. And the guitar brought it out of me. So let's give it a try. Yeah, we could probably do some coil tapping like this. Let's turn off this mic. Let's put on the cab. Let's see what we got. She gets a little heavier, something like this. Thank you. 
just think of that. That was kind of cool, huh? Let me see here. Um, Rick Hefner's here, saying, hey, Eric, and hey, everybody. Um, and do you have a riff? Uh, where do you have a riff library of yours? I do have a riff library. I have <laughs> crazy, crazy songs. What I do with my music, let's jump back over to the camera. So I'm looking at the top of my head here. For my music, I have a multiple years of libraries and, and I'll record stuff, whether it be a mini recorder, my phone, through the computer, properly, professionally. And um, I'll save them and I'll date them, whatever. And then six months down the road, I'll listen to some of them again. And, if, and if in six months time, if I like them, if I haven't done anything yet, I'll move them to another folder called Keepers. And I'll keep doing that. And there's some songs I go back that are three, four, five, more, 10 years old sometimes. And if I still like them then, then it means I should do something with them. So everyone's giving me some uh, nice uh, props over there. I appreciate that. Thank you. Let's try another uh, one of my songs, and then maybe I'll try to improv some Van Halen, and we'll call it a day. I figured we'd probably be doing this close to an hour, so let's see what we got. One more sip of coffee, real quick here. Pardon me, having a quick drink on camera. And that, I made a large cup. That's going to be cold before the end of the show, but we'll try to get most of the hot coffee. So thank you, everyone, for your patience with me tonight, and then I hope you're having fun. Nice way to kill a Monday evening and get you in the mood for... Tuesday, which means Wednesday's around the corner. Hump day, we're halfway through the week. Okay, let's give this a try. This one's going to be dirty, so we're going to go to the dirty channel. And it gets loud in here when I go to the dirty channel. Okay, here we go. Turn off my mic. that sound that sound okay let's change back cameras here 
I think that was pretty good. That was that was really, really cool. Uh, thank you, everybody, for jumping over there in the chat. It's really awesome. So just to recap again, too, this is the 2015 limited edition Pacer Vintage. It is still available while supplies last. We'll come back over to the website one more time here. Let's get rid of the screen over here. Let's get rid of that. Let's jump over here. So I still have it open. The link is in the description down below. It'll take you right to this page. And then while you're here, shop around at some of the other guitars. I'll show you one that I'm going to be doing a demo on here probably in the next couple nights, maybe tomorrow. Um, it, it will be t time depending, but it will be this week for sure. So, but the links I have down below will take you not only to this exact section, it'll take you to the dealer locator as well too, uh, to find out where you can purchase these. And then also there's also a Canadian retailer, Long McQuaid, that you could purchase uh, the one that I have in my hands right now too. But once you're here, also have a look around at the, here's one I'm gonna be doing here, the Assault. Okay, and let's come down to this one here, the Assault Plus. Okay, uh, the Assault uh, Plus 220. And this is really cool. At first I wasn't sure um, with the maple neck on that, maple fretboard I should say, um, on like on a Les Paul style guitar, it's like, mm, I don't know if I like it. Uh, and the one that we have here is this one here. And this color does not do it justice on this, this screenshot. They call it Candy Tangerine, I guess. Here again, you need to see this guitar in person. It's more of like a metallic rust. I, that's my description of it. It's absolutely amazing. Uh, glued neck. It's got locking tuners, all that kind of fun stuff. 24 fret, uh, which is kind of neat as well, too. So that's going to be a review I'm going to do on that one. It, it just sings. Coil tapping on that one as well, too. Like everything you saw me doing on this one. So have a look at that guitar as well, too. They've even got some with uh, real Floyds and that on there as well, too. Um, really, really cool stuff. Um, but yeah, let's go back to, let's go back to the, uh, here we go, Pacer. And then here we go again, limited edition. It is available still while supplies last. And uh, uh, Jose V says, um, the guitar is amazing, but the tone is in the fingers. Uh, the tone's in the fingers and the helix. Uh, a little bit in the fingers, a little bit in the helix. So say 75% helix and 25% my fingers. No, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. That's uh, it's, uh, a, a very, uh, very well appreciated. Thank you on that. It's a, it's a fun guitar to play. And as you heard me playing that little riff, you can all do you know, that kind of thing. Uh, that uh, it's very, was inspired from this guitar. I will, um, I'll give you one more riff. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to, we'll conclude this broadcast. 8.46 here Eastern Standard Time. We'll be just under the hour. I, it's a fun guitar to play. Love it. So this is one, you know, I talk about going back like 20 years or 10 years, five years, 10 years. This one over 20 years. A song I wrote way back in the day. And that guy that I told you that had the, someone asked earlier about, you know, are old Kramers worth it to get them? Sure, if you can, go ahead and grab them. Yeah, um, he and him and I were working on this song and uh, he's got a Robert Plant voice. Uh, he could do Sammy Hagar and he could do Robert Plant, both of those really, really well. Um, <laughs> Terry's here. The, t the tone's in the Tim Hortons cup. I don't have a Tim Hortons cup today, but I do have some good coffee. Mm. And Rick Hefner says uh, he's a maple freak. But this fellow that's uh, got the old Kramers, I want to get him down here to do some vocals on this because this is a total 80s song. I'm stuck in the 80s. Kramer's had, Kramer might be stuck in the 80s as far as the guitars, and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. These were, the, the, these were kind of the guitars of the 80s that kind of saved uh, raw guitar. Um, so this is an 80s riff that I wrote, a song called Dreams, and it would sound really nice. I use, uh, sometimes when I record this, I'm going to use the Line 6 Variax just for that clean part of it, and then this would, this guitar would be tremendous for the rock part. So let's give this an idea. Here's how it would start, something like this. No, let's go back to a better camera. One second. Here we go. This will be the last part of the broadcast. That was uh, that was dual humbucker there, no split that I can see. That was dual humbucker, so that was I was wondering why it sounded so so pretty. There's dual humbucker. Now where I went from that, I went into a real rocky thing, and it and it's changed. So I, you know how you know we some of those classic Van Halen bootlegs. 
Um, you know, Eddie would you'd take like stuff from like uh, Voodoo Queen, which became uh, I know Mean Street and things like that, and um, She's a Woman, things like that as well too. Like certain signature riffs became other new songs. Well, when I went into the starting of this song, this will be saved now for another song. But here's how that one went after it ended the last chord. Okay, so get nice and dirty. Can't turn off this mic. So the riff would go like. <laughs> Okay, but I've changed that now. So now it's kind of got that same, you know, uh, duck, 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 that kind of thing. Here's where it is today. Includes our riff cast day that was a lot of fun i hope you guys enjoyed that uh let me see um uh terry says nice our russell tabor says killer tone thank you uh, i appreciate that sir uh jose v said, i'm going to learn that riff awesome and please do it because i'm going to forget it and i'm going to ask you how did i play that riff i'm going to get you to show me back um steve Segura is giving uh, the horns up and uh, yeah, thank that Terry. I appreciate that. That's a nice compliment. Kind of reminds me of Jakey Lee from his crazy, uh, from his Aussie days, crazy Aussie days. Uh, I, I added the crazy part. Um, you know, I bark at the moon. It was my favorite all time solo by Jakey Lee. I'm sure he's got better. And, um, so it was one of those things, um, uh, one of those things where I was listening to all the time, not necessarily was inspired or was an inspiration. What's what I'm looking for? An influence. That's what I'm looking for. It wasn't a direct influence on me, but it was when you hear things like that. Just like, you know, the uh, the George Lynch stuff. I've been doing that a little bit lately, and that's the last riff I'm going to play, and I'm probably going to butcher it, and I'm tuned up a, um, a half a step higher than what he would normally play it. But the, the guitar lately has been inspiring me like crazy. This guitar has been inspiring me using my Helix with it. has been a huge godsend to me. Let's see if we can do a little Mr. Scary just to end the broadcast, and it could either go well or not so well. Let's find out. <laughs> Thank you. 
There we go. I'm actually working up a sweat. I think we will call that a day. So links down below. Kramer Guitars. Have a look. Uh, fun stuff. Totally, totally fun stuff. Be sure to come back and watch for updates on the Facebook page. Uh, Facebook.com slash EVHGearTV. And I will be posting there if I do any of these unscheduled impromptu broadcasts. I like to keep people guessing when I'm going to be going live. Every Friday night, obviously, with interviews and things like that. But I like to keep people guessing and always like, okay, Eric's doing something. Also, I'd love some likes over on my new sister page, uh, facebook.com slash The Helix Hour. That's a new sideshow. I've um, not sideshow with like, you know, uh, you know, freaks and, and tricks and animals and hoops and fires. It's not that kind of sideshow. It's my secondary show, which is gaining some some nice legs um, and not not legs that you'd stare at, like, you know, pretty legs. You know, I'm rambling. The Helix Hour. Go to The Helix Hour. Check it. Take a look at that at facebook.com slash The Helix Hour. Uh, leave some likes if you like this stuff. You can check out my Patreon down below as well, too. Uh, I've got a list of my Patreon subscribers already, or patrons, Patreons, patrons, or something like that. The people that just rock, just like all you guys and girls in the chat. And uh, I just I really appreciate the time tonight. We're pretty much going to wrap up on the hour. And uh, be sure to check out this guitar. You can get it if you act quickly. And uh, order now. It's affordable. We will talk to you very, very soon. Don Shepard says, hey, Eric, I guess I'm watching the replay. <laughs> yeah, I am sorry. This was an unscheduled broadcast, but one that you can uh, definitely watch back and share with some of your guitar player friends and tell them to check out this beautiful, beautiful guitar from Kramer, USA. All right, let's turn it over to the outro credits. We will see you very, very soon. Thank you for spending an hour with me on this uh, beautiful Monday evening, and we will see you very soon. Until next time, cheers. I am now on Patreon. If you enjoy my content and wish to support my channel and what I do, then please check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash evhgeartv. Your support assures the continued growth of this channel and a fun community in which to share our love for Van Halen, music gear, and much more. My name is Eric Lampley, Booking Guitar. Video production services provided by Design39 Media. Visit design39media.com for all your website, photography, and video production needs. Microphones for EVH and Gear TV are provided by Rode Microphones, and official Van Halen merchandise is provided by vanhalenstore.com.